Bismillah, Bismillah, Bismillah. Welcome to another episode of the Self Reflection Podcast. I am your host. I'm joking. <laughs> the time is five twenty four a.m. Fajr's just came in, or maybe like twenty minutes ago it came in. Uh, actually, I don't know. Maybe it came an hour ago. So I'm not sure. This episode is sponsored by Human Appeal. Um, we're going to be hosting some challenges soon that you guys can get involved in. I think I'm going to be doing Everest at the end of the year. I'm not excited for that at all. Um, probably I'm too fat for this, so I need to lose some weight before I do that. Um, not only are we sponsored by Human Appeal. Um, no, sorry. As well as being sponsored by Human Appeal, we're still fundraising for the people of Turkey and the people of Palestine. So if you go on over to my Instagram account, you can go on and donate in the link in my bio, uh, inshallah. Uh, again, if you've got some spare change to 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 give. Um, but yeah, follow me on my social media, which is just Umar, J-U-S-T-U-M-R. And follow the Human Appeals Instagram as well, just to keep uh, up to date with all of our deployments and all of our challenges that we've got going and all the fundraisers that we've got going. Um, and then inshallah, you lot can benefit from that as well. Um, anyway, today's episode, I've been talking about this a lot this week, so that's why I've, I've decided to make an episode on it. Um, again, like I say, every 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 single time, I'm going to try and make this a short episode. Um, I'm going to try to keep it under at least maybe 10, 12 minutes, uh, but I always fail. <laughs> but yeah, so um, hold on, I've got a verse from the Quran up because I don't want to get it wrong when I read it. I don't like, I don't mind getting like, people's quotes mixed up but like you know if it's like a philosopher's quotes i don't care if i mess it up <laughs> but when it's like a hadith or the word of allah like i i'd like to get it right um, <laughs> so i've got that i've got that up anyway uh today's episode is about sin and forgiveness and more importantly which one we should focus on um if you have been around the Muslim community a lot, <laughs> if you've been around the Muslim community for a few years, you'll realize they love to talk about sin a lot <laughs> and where you're going to burn <laughs> if you do these certain sins. And again, even though there is a, there is a place, there is a place for um, talking about the realities of sin. And again, if you was to if you continue to just go down a path of sin um, where you might end up, even though there is the element of that in the Quran and Allah talks about that and the Prophet Muhammad talks about that, there's another side to the coin and not only is there another side to the coin, the other side, the merciful side, the forgiveness side, the hopeful side, the the beautiful side, Allah and the Prophet Muhammad talk about this reality a lot more than they do um again the negative let's say negative part um so I, for me I, i've always i don't know if, if you ever see my content i don't try to talk about the 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 judging element of islam or because again and also because i can't judge because i mean look at me i'm just do you know what I mean? I'm, I'm, not, I'm not a pious person. I'm not a um, righteous person or whatever. I just hear... And if anything, I, I need the forgiveness more than anyone else. And I guess that's why I, I kind of bank on it. And that's why I'm very, um, I, I don't know, forgiving of people because I expect and I hope that Allah grants me the same amount of forgiveness. So I show forgiveness to the, to the creation of Allah because I want forgiveness from the creator and I pray that he shows me the same um blessing and forgiveness if i show it to the creation and obviously he will because what well, if i do because allah is the all forgiving he's the most forgiving so you can never out forgive allah if you was willing to forgive someone but believe me allah is willing to forgive someone so that's the first thing i want to talk about is uh the first part i want to talk about is the mercy of allah um I think we interact with Allah the same way that we interact with humans. Whether it be in our worship, when we worship Allah and we give our worship to Allah because we want to receive something from the world or receive something in the dunya from Allah, we kind of go into this 
relationship with Allah like a businessman. Allah, I'll give you five prayers if you give me a Bentley Bentayga outside. Like it's a very much a transactional um, relationship with Allah. And I would advise everyone not to enter that relationship with Allah because we, again, we've heard all the things of like just the, the blessing of your eyesight, you could never repay Allah for. So if we go down the list of blessings Allah has given you, you'll never be able to match up to what he's given you. So there's nothing you can give that would like make up for what Allah has given to you. So don't go into a relationship with Allah in this eyes of like, what can you give to Allah? Because in reality, you can't really give anything to Allah because he doesn't need anything from you. You piece of, I'm joking. <laughs> but yeah, um, but I'm saying back to the mercy of Allah. The reason why I'm saying we go the how we should judge uh, the, the sorry the reason why I'm saying we look at Allah the same way we look at humans is I think sometimes we attribute human uh, humanity's mercy and we sometimes conflate that with Allah's mercy. I can do someone wrong a couple times. There's even a saying: "Fool me once, shame on shame on you." For me twice. Okay, I was about to quote the J. Cole line. I've actually forgot the um, I forgot the actual uh, quote. <laughs> For me one time. <laughs> no. Anyway, <laughs> but there's um. <laughs> oh, that would have been funny. So yeah, we go into the same. We look at Allah, Allah's mercy. We look at Allah's mercy the same way we look at humanity's mercy. Allah's mercy knows no ends. He does not get tired of you when you keep on making mistakes or you keep on, um, again, not living up to your potential or you're not doing what is obligatory upon you or you keep on transgressing and going and sinning, etc. With hum the, the reason why I say with humans, if you was to do that with another human, if you kept on um, treating another human badly or doing a, uh, another human being wrong that other human being would eventually get sick of you after about two three times that then to be honest that's the that number is even quite forgiving um because we live in a society now where it's like oh my god you do you do one thing that betrays my trust or you do one thing that requires me to forgive you it's like no i'm done with you and I, i'll never forgive you blah blah again humans treat other humans very harshly when it comes to forgiveness and we look at Allah the same way as we look at humans, which we shouldn't. Allah will tell you, you can do wrongs thousands of times. As long as you ask for forgiveness, as long as you seek forgiveness, I will forgive you because that is the mercy of Allah. It's not the mercy of creation. It's the mercy of the creator. And the creator is always above his creation. So that's the the the, the mercy we need to be focusing on. Yeah, Allah even says in the Quran, um, let me get this quote up. He even says to he, he tells the Prophet to to Sallallahu Alaihi to inform the people, he says, Oh my servants who've exceeded the limits against their souls. So it it's not even like you've it's Allah's not even saying that you've done him dirty, you've not exceeded the limits against him. He said, You've exceeded the limits who have exceeded their limits against their souls. You haven't done Allah dirty. You haven't done him bad. You've done yourself an injustice. You've let yourself down. But then Allah follows it up with, do not lose hope in Allah's mercy, for Allah certainly forgives all sins. Allah didn't say he forgives some sins. He didn't say um, I forgive sins only on Mondays and Thursdays, or I only forgive sins on Jummah. He says he forgives all sins. This is the mercy of Allah. The mercy of Allah knows no bounds. That he will forgive everything. Stop looking at Allah the same way you look at human beings when it comes to mercy. Because Allah will always outdo your, even your human comprehension of forgiveness when it comes to him. And even in that, when Allah says, don't lose hope in the mercy of Allah, again, you you have exceeded the limits who have exceeded their limits against their souls you've done yourself an injustice you haven't done Allah an injustice and Allah is still there reassuring you that don't lose hope in his mercy 
even though you've done this to yourself. Don't lose hope in his mercy. Even in that, you can hear the love of Allah. He constantly reassuring you, that, that like informing you that all you have to do is repent and come back and everything will be fine. And you can keep on moving forward in this life. And then it brings me on to the next point of Allah, even in that moment, even in that verse and so many other verses, Allah, Allah's main focus on us and what our main focus should be on is the focus is on forgiveness, not the sin. Allah wants us to focus on Allah's mercy. He wants us to focus on him forgiving us, us repenting rather than us focusing on the sin that we've already committed. And if anyone knows, I think it's in Latin, I'm not sure. But a sin, the word sin means to miss the mark. When you miss the mark, so when you're like in an archery range or a shooting range, if you miss the mark, what do you do? Do you put the bow and arrow away and say, I'm never going to shoot again because I've missed one? No, you miss the mark. You just take another shot until you hit the mark. And you're going to miss. You're going to continue to miss the mark like not each and every time but you're going to miss the mark a lot but that's the 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 but the focus is to take the shot again to see where you went wrong this to see where you slipped up and made the error of the sin and to just make the adjustments and come back the focus is on forgiveness not the sin and i remember it's like if we continue to focus on the forgiveness element which is the worship element forgiveness is worship seeking forgiveness is worship because you're turning to allah you're turning to something greater than yourself to ask for forgiveness so you can in turn kind of get blessings or get the strength to overcome a certain sin how many of us have so, so many sins that we just like seem to to not be able to get past i know i've got loads <laughs> but um but it's this thing of just to, to, to focus on the forgiveness element because to focus on the forgiveness and to want to seek out forgiveness is a sign that our heart is still alive. There's a reflection uh, by Sheikh Ibn Atala in the Book of Wisdoms when he's talking about the difference between a living heart and a dead heart. And he said the dead heart is the heart that when it sins and when it's when it uh, forgets what that like it leaves the prayers and it leaves the fasting it says the de the sign of a dead heart is one that doesn't doesn't feel sadness when it commits a sin when it doesn't feel sadness when it misses a prayer and it says the sign of a living heart is when you sin when you again you miss a prayer or whatever you feel it you feel like oh i, I can do better but it's not to to get caught up in that to that that depressing feeling of sadness of oh my god i'm so bad i need to do better no the focus again the focus is not on the sin the focus is on the forgiveness all you have to do in those moments is to turn back you can even go i'd go as far as even saying when you again you um miss a prayer or you commit a sin and you feel bad it's a it's a sign of goodness it's a sign that your heart is alive and it's a sign that as long as you've still got that desire to want to do good then there's always a hope, there's always hope, there's always a chance. And Allah, in that verse when he says, don't lose uh, hope in the mercy of Allah, as long as you have hope, you can always change in any moment for the better and become better. Um, and then the last thing I want to talk about is um, accepting people, uh, whatever part of the path they're on. And the thing is, in within the Muslim community, and I see it even with it, within some of my friends, to be honest, when we want someone to do better we kind of we, we forget that people ev muslims forget that everyone is on a journey to allah every every single human being whether they're muslim or whether they're not they are on a path to allah in some degree and you can't judge someone depending on where they are right now because you don't know where their journey is going to take them for example my name is umar where I, and i love the fact that my mother named me umar because i resonate with his story so much and who he was as a person as well umar ibn al-khattab if we was to judge umar ibn al-khattab on the night when he tried to murder the prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam we would all say <laughs> collectively that this man is destined for hell. You are trying to kill the messenger of God. There, I don't even believe that there can be a worse sin. And if we was to judge him in that moment, 
we would say he's going to hell, blah, blah, blah. But look at where his journey took him. Because he was forgiven for his sins and he made the necessary changes, he became one of the right hands of the Prophet Muhammad To go from trying to murder the Prophet Muhammad Wasallam, the messenger of God, to becoming the right hand of the Prophet Muhammad Wasallam, you can't judge someone based on where they are or where you meet them or where you last seen them you can't judge them based on those things and this is when i come i've kind of i'm trying to implement this new thing in my life of just ultimate acceptance of people because i don't know where where people are in their journey with allah i don't even know where my journey will end up so i have to be able to accept people because i can't judge them from where they are right now because I don't know where they're going to be going or where they're going to end up. Allah might have written for a certain person that I'm judging. Allah might have written that Allah is going to forgive this person and raise his maqam and raise him to a level that is far supersedes mine and everything. And it's like, and here's me judging him thinking I'm better than him because at the moment he doesn't pray. Or here's me judging someone because at the moment this person is uh, having sex before marriage. Or I'm judging him because he's selling drugs. Or I'm judging him because of what it, whatever I'm judging him about. I don't know where the person's story is going to end up. And the same for you. You don't know where your story is going to end up. So as a whole, even when we judge ourselves, so because again, I, I judge myself a lot. Even when we're judging ourselves, give yourself some, I don't know, some leeway. You don't know where your story is going to end up. Just like Umar ibn al-Khattab, to go from trying to murder the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to becoming the right hand of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. You have no idea where your story is going to end up. So don't think just because you've committed a sin here or you've let you've uh, neglected the prayer for a year, two years, I don't care how long you've, do, you've done it. As long as you have breath in your body, Allah is always telling you there's a chance for you to come back. There's hope for you to come back because Allah's mercy supersedes any type of mercy you can find within creation Allah will forgive you if you just turn back to him <laughs> I was finishing my point but yeah anyway I just wanted to finish on that um uh yeah I'm gonna go sleep now because I'm really tired <laughs> but yeah no I hope uh, someone benefited from that uh again if you benefit from any of these reflections again please donate to the cause uh, again, we're raising money for the people of Turkey and Syria and we're donating money to the people of Palestine as well. And I'm sure I think we're starting one for the people of Sudan uh, soon. So, again, make sure you keep on donating um, and helping the people, inshallah. And again, just and with anyone that you meet with. Yeah. And with every with. <laughs> I think this and just I'm going to finish on this last point. This is like a message. This is a message to to Muslims. We have to learn to be more accepting of people. We don't have to accept their beliefs. We don't have to accept what they believe to be wrong or right, whatever. But we do have to develop a, a level of acceptance, of ultimate acceptance, because we can't write anyone off. You can never write anyone off. And I think when you open your arms to people, when you show people that you'll accept them, as they are, again, if they're sinning, if they if they sell drugs, if they're having sex, or if they, as long as they feel like they're not being judged by you, people will open up to you more, and people, and you can actually act as a vessel f for Allah to to maybe open that person's heart up to Islam and to Allah. Think about it. The Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam knew that Umar ibn Al Khattab was coming to kill him. And, uh, and he still forgave him. And because of that forgiveness, because of that purity, that is what affected Umar ibn al-Khattab's heart. And the thing is, if you if someone comes to you, again, sinning, selling drugs, having sex, whatever it is they're doing, whatever sin they're, they've, they can't get past at this moment in their life, if you learn to accept them, don't judge them, and just... Again, just hold their hand along the, this journey called life. That's what's going to affect people's hearts. Again, sometimes people are just always focusing on like... People don't care. I mean, some people do, but people don't care about 
the scientific facts and the miracles and the blah, blah. Again, some people do, but a lot of the times, people, it's the character of Muslims that will change people's hearts towards Islam and change people's hearts towards Allah. And may Allah bless you and may Allah increase you, and He will. If you're a person that when they think of a Muslim, when they think of Islam or when they think of Allah, they remember you and say, no, this person treated me good. This person accepted me and helped me and nurtured me and blah, blah. Think of the blessings that you would get if that is the, when someone thinks of Islam a lot and they think of, and they now think of it in a positive, good light because they came into contact with you. So yeah, so uh, that's just a little message, uh, whatever, you don't have to listen to it. <laughs> but yeah, assalamu alaikum, I'll see you on the next episode, guys. <laughs>